I'm here with the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver. I appreciate you taking the time to join me again this year, so I, I sincerely appreciate that. Thank you, and I haven't seen you lately. Every year you get bigger. <laughs> I don't think you're growing taller, but you get stronger. Congratulations on all you and the Trailblazers are doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. I've seen reports that the Warriors may decide as a team on whether or not to skip the White House visit. So I have to ask, do you think it should be an individual choice, team choice, or a league decision? I definitely don't think it should be a league decision. I don't think we should be directing teams or players um, to go to the White House. It's my view that if invited, our team should go to the White House, that regardless of people's personal political views, I think that these institutions are bigger than any individual politician, any individual elected official. And it concerns me that something like going to the White House after winning a championship is something that's been a great tradition would become one that is partisan. I will say, though, even though I think that teams should make decisions as organizations, that I would also respect an individual player's decision not to go. You recently came out saying that you could have a, a Twitter account, a secret Twitter account. So tell me a little bit about that. I never said I had a secret Twitter account. What I said was I had a Twitter account and then some investigative blogger said, this must be his account. And all I'll say is I never set out to have a secret account. I was an early adopter to Twitter. I created an account not to tweet on my own behalf, but to follow people. It's a very valuable news source. When you want breaking news. I love Twitter. I think it's, it's awesome because you get real time. You get real time news, real time Precisely. activities. And as a player, it's, it's interesting to see some people react to certain situations. For instance, trade deadlines, Dwight Howard tweeting about the free agency right. and getting traded five minutes later. Right. Because, and, and, and as you know, you and other players are active participants mm -hmm. in the Twitter sphere as well. So you have professional journalists, you have fans, of course, and then you have players in the league, owners and others, all creating this in really robust community of points of view out there. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome point. And obviously the NBA is arguably the most progressive league in the four major sports. And with the WNBA's partnership with Planned Parenthood, I wanted to ask you about potential initiatives the NBA might support in the next year or so. Well, in, in the case of Planned Parenthood, it was actually a relationship with the Seattle Storm with Planned Parenthood, and it was a team decision yeah. they made. Um, it's one that, as a league, we're supportive of, but we're supportive of a team's right to make a decision on a relationship like that. A team can decide what's best for it in their community. You recently wrote a piece for the New York Times supporting gambling and sports a few years ago. So has, has your view changed at all? I accept as a given that there are is an enormous amount currently being bet on sports in the United States. Virtually all of it is underground. It's a multi-hundred billion dollar industry with zero transparency on the part of the leagues. So if there is unusual behavior, we have no way of detecting it. Think on the other hand of a public stock market. We all know of stories of insider trading and often the reason insider traders are caught is because there's aberrational behavior. So it's not as much that I'm an advocate for sports betting, it's more I feel I'm a realist as you know, I play in a state where recreational marijuana is legal. The federal law still criminalizes it. Personally, I don't partake in it. But from a league perspective, do you foresee any changes in the NBA stance? And, you know, like as some players would say, what's wrong with smoking marijuana if it doesn't affect your performance? I, I don't see the need for any changes right now. I mean, it's legal in certain states, but as you know, our players are constantly traveling and it might be a bit of a trap you know to say we're going to legalize it in these states but no it's illegal in other states and then have players get in a position where they're traveling with marijuana or whatever else and getting in trouble yeah that's the travel thing is a good point i never thought about that but three on three hoops seems like it's having a moment right now the olympics you know announcing they will start a new sport in 2020 ice cubes three on three or a big three tournament do you think it's good for the league or do you think that it, it's kind of diluting the game of basketball from a five on five standpoint I think it's great for the league. As I understand it from the Olympic movement, you know, three on three basketball is to indoor basketball as beach volleyball is to traditional indoor Olympic volleyball. And so here's an opportunity for countries who aren't probably, don't have the depth to field a 12 person team, men's or women's, but with I think the three and three teams are four players, with four great yeah. players from, and generally from smaller countries are in a position to compete in the Olympics and potentially medal. I think it's wonderful for the sport, and same with the big three. In that league in particular with Ice Cube, I know he's very focused on vet, NBA vets 
getting out there, having additional opportunities to yeah. play the game. So I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing AI. That's, that's one of the things I want to see. I appreciate you taking some time. Thank you, CJ. Appreciate you. That was great.